The gas mask is one of the most iconic features of the First World War, and as a reenactor, it is one of the most important pieces of your kit after the tunic, trousers, and helmet. However, reproductions are far and few between, and their quality is lacking at best. So, what is there for us to do? My reproduction M15 is pretty decent, but not great for 1918 reenacting. And originals are hard to find, expensive, and not something you want to use in reenactment. So in this video, I figured I'd bring out some of my original gas masks and bring out my reproduction gas masks, compare them, and show some things that you can do to make your reproduction look more authentic, and give some of my own advice to you about which gas masks to go for and the best quality ones out there. I'm the Wolf of 1918, and this military reenactment collab special, I'm going to be talking about gas masks for the Imperial German Army. Now, as you could probably tell from that introduction, I will be talking about the gas masks of the First World War, specifically those of the German military. And more importantly, I'm going to be compar doing comparisons of the two M17 gas masks that I have from the First World War, comparing them to the reproduction M17 gas mask I have, and then showcasing probably my favorite one that I have, the reproduction M15 gas mask I possess for reenactment purposes. Now. These two gas masks in front, and I will be showing images of these that I will take after the video is done being made, are my two originals. They are both M17s, and one of them was distinctly used in combat due to its smell of chlorine gas, activated chlorine gas, so not very dangerous, but chlorine gas nonetheless that was very potent in the gas mask canister when I first received it. The other one is one that has been slightly refurbished to make it look better, was cheaper, and I don't have very much information on it as the markings on it are lacking. It does have an original filter and is an original mask based off the quality of the leather and the type of leather used, as well as the manufacturing um, of it is definitely original. But it has been refurbished, uh, probably for use with reenactors, but I'm not gonna use it like that. It's too small for me anyway, and it's not great to use originals because they'll get damaged more. Right here, I have my reproduction gas mask. Again, you will see pictures of it and uh, after I get them taken. And then I have my M15, which I was wearing earlier. It is probably my favorite gas mask to wear since it is more comfortable, breathes easier, doesn't get as fogged up, and is just better all around. So, what exactly goes into one of these gas masks? And what are some of the big differences between these specific types? Well, first of all, originals are just better made. If you look at the type of leather, they're more rigid, and this might have come with age, but they definitely feel sturdier, for starters. Um, they're definitely more comfortable to wear, as I have worn both of these at any one point, um, just to test them out. It doesn't hurt them if you're careful and know what you're doing, and I know what I'm doing. I don't recommend it, unless you know what you're doing, and you have a gas mask that you know its strengths and its weaknesses. I'm always very careful when doing that with original military, especially gas masks, since the filters can be very heavy and the aging of the leather can cause problems with that. So you always want to make sure you know what you're doing when you're handling these things, and that's what I always ensure that I'm doing. I've only worn each one about once. I think I've worn this one twice, and then this one only one time, and that's about it for me. I don't want to do that anymore. It's not comfortable, and it doesn't really... It's, it's not really great. These are both too small for me, especially since the leather shrunk, but I digress. Um, the leather, not the leather, the inner eye spiders, spider webs inside the frames there, are also thinner than the reproductions. The reproductions tend to have a thicker metal, um, both in the width of the bars and the thickness of the metal seems to be thicker. It's it just, just bigger all around. And... The construction is also different. Um, it's just a very, like these things, these little eyelets here were supposed to be taken out so you could replace the lenses as they got um, ruined by gas exposure. Uh, and so each one, you know, you'd have to be able to replace them. The other major thing that's different is also some of the construction. If you look inside these gas masks, although the construction can be seen as very similar, there's just a difference in coloring to things. The leather used on the reproductions is more of this weird 
tan color, a bright leather, and it's doesn't even really, really feel like good quality leather. Whereas this is more of a comfortable, it's a darker leather, it's been, you know, you can definitely tell that there's been some real thought and care into these things. And there better be, because these are what soldiers relied on to save their lives during a gas attack. So there's definitely an important aspect to making sure that these ones were good quality, whereas these are merely reproductions. Now, both model of gas mask filters that I have, and these are both slightly different models, although they look very similar, were the most common in the war. Whereas the one that you get with your reproduction is not one of the more common ones. In fact, what's interesting to note is that the one that comes with the gummy mask is similar to the ones of the originals, although it is the early war version of it. Specifically because of the person who made this, it is the early war Austrian version. Now, a couple reasons why the gummy mask wasn't a permanent fixture and then it, it was moved to these leather ones. This, is specific, this specifically has to do with the use of mustard gas on the Western Front. These gas masks were made in order to handle that specific threat. The gummy mask couldn't handle it due to the rubberized material that it was made out of. Whereas these masks could handle the uh, effects of mustard gas and keep it from getting into people's eyes, whereas these ones couldn't do it as effectively. The seal wasn't perfect on the person's face, which is also why after 1917 you don't see very many beards within the German army because they needed that perfect seal to protect them from things like mustard gas and other gases that were coming into the Western Front that were never seen on the East. Whereas this, it was mainly to help get up against chlorine gas and tear gas nothing too potent. Hence why the Austrians never used these masks, but they used the gummy masks. Um, so obviously there are some big differences between reproductions and originals, and I don't have an M15 to compare with. Uh, supposedly the person who made this M15 uses an original as his base, and this is about as close as you can get to an original with a reproduction. Whereas the reproduction M17s are far from what they're supposed to look like. The construction is similar, but also very different. If you actually look at the base, that the filter connects to on these gas masks, you can one, see that they kind of vary between the two of them. And it almost looks like one's, uh, you know, a little bit of a later war variant than the other one. Whereas this one has a different construction than both. And it's just a little weird. The leather material has a different feel to it. It just does different things. And of course, there is some work that you can do to make it better and make it look more authentic by adding your own tarring to the stitching, which is what these gas masks do. And that's mainly to help keep the seal proper because the stitching is where the seal is going to be broken. So if you tar that area up, it's going to seal it better. The originals have that to keep the seal, whereas the repros don't because they don't need to and people are lazy. So with the reproduction here versus the original, there is a bit of a difference in terms of the gap on the eyes, as you can see. And you could easily put that to, oh, shrinking leather. And while that might have something to do with it, both of these masks have the same distance between their eyes. Although the eyelets, the leather around the eye to keep the seal, isn't uh, the same on both, um, their distance between the eyes is. Whereas this one, the eyelets are huge. I had to customly cut these down and they turned out very, very small. Pretty disappointed with myself. And this entire repro right here, I kind of screwed up, but I digress. Um, this one is just, it, the, the gap is really big. It can be difficult to see out of. The position in relation to how it sits is a little bit lower. This one sits a little higher than this one. Um, and it's really, really unfortunate that these gas masks are just slightly off. The measurements are off. The positioning of things is just, just enough off to really, to really hamper um, getting it just right. The construction of the straps is very close to the original. Uh, these originals here have an almost exact, uh, are exact copies of each other in terms of the, the repros have a very similar look to them. In fact, I think that this right here is a late war gas mask because the strap here feels almost like paper cloth. Whereas this one, the pieces that are original and not added on by the people who refurbished it, feel like they're made out of a more, out of a stronger material that isn't as thin. So maybe this one just saw more use, who knows. But that's effectively where the differences start to stop. It's this obvious difference between the two of them. 
where the repros just look off. And that's mainly to do with several key problems with the measurements and several key issues with the way that it's been constructed. And that's mainly out of just corner cutting and cheaply made uh, and a cheaply made piece of reenactment gear. So that's sort of the comparisons. And I guess my biggest thing that I need to talk about in this video is how to properly get yourself set up for success when it comes to getting yourself a gas mask for your kit. Since reproductions aren't very good, originals you don't wanna wear, so what do you do? And it's a really difficult question to answer. Some hardcore reenactors get very poor condition gas masks and go through a ton of work to refurbish them. That takes a lot of time, a lot of care, and quite a bit of money to do. And you have to get lucky with the gas mask and that it's the right size. The next important, the other thing that you can do is get a reproduction and do something similar, but just enough to make it look passable. You're not gonna be flaunting your gas mask all the time and it's just going to sit on your face and, you know, during the reenactment. So it's not a huge thing to get it perfect, but a repro gas mask is distinctly different. And as you can tell, they have completely different looks to them. They just, there is just a difference to it that it's hard to explain. There's something about the repros that is just off-putting, that makes it feel wrong. And it's they're not as comfortable. As tight as these things are on me, they are far more comfortable than this is. Um, the, the eyepieces in here squeeze up against your head, whereas these ones sort of just rest on your head. And it's just very interesting to know the differences between them. So. What do you do? In reality, you just kind of have to make do with what you have. If you don't have the money to get an original and you don't have the time to get one that is in poor shape, kind of fits, and you can sort of fix it up to be usable, in all honesty, I wouldn't recommend that. That's something very few people do and it's important that very few people do it. So you just kind of have to bite the bullet and get a poor reproduction. Another thing you can do is see if there's someone that you know that has an original. Go to them and get exact measurements and make your own gas mask. You can kind of get a look and a feel for sort of how these things are made. And if you get a repro, you can take the leather off of this base and re-put it all together with a better mask top. What I've personally done is I've gotten an M15 gummy mask because the regiment that I reenact used these up until 1918. And now the reason for that is when the 17th was last fighting on the Western Front before 1918, it was in 1916 during the Battle of the Somme. They did fight in early 1917 for a time and then were moved to the Eastern Front. They got moved to the Eastern Front right around when the M17s were getting released to the Germans, when these newer model gas masks were getting produced. So the 17th wouldn't have gotten the new masks to counter the new threats of gas on the Western Front until they got shifted back in early 1918. And even then they might not have received them because of supply issues and leather shortages. So it is interesting to think that this probably would have worked. This mask here could probably work until the end of the war for most, uh, for most reenactors of the 17th Reserve Infantry Regiment. It's more comfortable, it looks better, and it's just all around a better mask in general in terms of reenactment value. And I guess in order to help you guys, this was bought from KUK Replique. He makes these things by hand um, I mean, machine sewing, of course, but he makes these things pretty much to order. And they are based off original pieces. And in all honesty, the quality is amazing. It's superb. And he does an excellent job at making them. I would highly recommend going to his site and purchasing one if you're looking for a gas mask. Obviously check with your unit and sometimes you might have to bite the bullet and get these. If you're doing reenactment for fun, get this mask. If you're doing reenactment for airsoft, get this mask and update it and make it airsoft ready. That's basically my whole view on it. This is an expensive mask that's very, very good for reenactments uh, pre-1917 and is great for if you just need a gas mask that you want to look good. This, but it is expensive. This mask is cheaper. You can modify it without having to feel like you're killing the bank and you can use it for airsoft pretty well because of how thick this leather is. I can't count the number of times I have been shot in the face wearing this mask and it's just boop, bounced right off. So this mask is really good for airsoft. That one, not so much. In terms of collections, honestly, you can't beat the originals. 
They look so much better and they look frightening when wearing it, especially the M17s. These things have such a interesting, uncanny valley look when you're wearing it. But you shouldn't. It's just not good. That's why I was wearing the reproduction at the opening of this video. I hope this video was helpful in some way or form. I know it was kind of rambling. I am once again doing this without a script and it's all off the top of my head. So I do apologize for the scatterbrainedness of these videos, but I did want to make this video since it's been requested a couple times and it's very important information to know what the differences between an original and a reproduction are and how to actually get a good reproduction. I've been asked that question so many times and I feel like it's important to make a video specifically talking about the differences and why it'll be impossible for you to get a proper reproduction M17 gas mask. No one makes a good one. You have to custom make them or buy an original and outfit it, which I do not recommend as much as I keep saying that, I do not recommend doing it because you are destroying a piece of historical value. So again, if you have any questions about this, you can always reach out to me and ask or leave your question in the comments, but that's all in all the differences between these masks, specifically these three, the two originals and then the repro. Um, originals just look cooler anyway. But all in all, it's important to just to realize that with some things when it comes to reenactment, you're not gonna get an exact match. You're gonna have to put in some elbow grease too to even get it close, but you can get there. And unfortunately, that's how it is with the gas masks. There are some people trying to make really good reproduction M17s, but there just isn't a market for it. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting. I keep saying that in every single video, but honestly, it means a lot. Uh, this video I've been meaning to make for a while, and I finally had some time to sit down and record it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and you guys found it helpful. Uh, leave all your tips or contentions or advice or questions down in the comments, and I'll be sure to check them out and respond when I can. If you guys want to stay in touch with the community, you can go ahead and join the Discord link in the description or follow my Instagram, also linked in the description. In fact, a bunch of links are down there if you guys want to check them out and whatnot. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen und tschüss, meine Kameraden.